Welcome in, everyone. Ready to dive into something new? Always. Today, we're tackling requalism, a belief system that might just flip your whole worldview upside down. I like that flip it upside down. Yeah. It really does make you re-examine things. All right, so to get us started, you brought a list of paradoxes with a requalist take, a whole paper on requalism, and even some requalism notes. Notes, huh? Yeah, the notes are kind of special, actually. Like, that's where a lot of the early thinking happened, connecting this idea of a self-regulating universe to, you know, how we figure out who we are. So, not your typical philosophy 101 stuff. Before we get lost in the weeds, what's the requalism elevator pitch? Okay, so three big pillars. Mm -hmm. Everything's connected, everything's always changing, and there's this law of arrangeability that kind of keeps everything in balance. Law of arrangeability. That one's going right on the vocab list. Sounds pretty high level, though. Like, are we talking physics here? More like a guiding principle, I'd say. Imagine a seesaw, right? Yep. It's constantly adjusting to even out. That's how the universe works, always finding equilibrium. Hmm. Yeah, I can see that. Even when things seem out of whack, they usually level out somehow. Exactly. And Recalism says this applies to, like, everything from massive cosmic stuff down to our own little lives. Okay, color me intrigued. But where did this whole belief system come from? Was it like one person had a big aha moment? It wasn't some, you know, philosopher in a tower kind of thing. It was way more organic, like personal reflection, connecting with nature, just trying to make sense of how we fit into it all. I get that. It's easy to feel lost with everything going on in the world. Maybe this is a way to find some order in the chaos. Speaking of requalism, how they even come up with that name? So it's a combo. Yeah. Re like again and again, equal, and then that equalism ending. It's all about this loop, everything influencing everything else. And it's, wait for it, self-referential. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Self-referential, you got to unpack that one for me. Basically, the system itself is part of that web it's describing. Even us talking about it, giving it a name, that's all part of the whole interconnected dance. My brain is doing backflips already, but I like it. So let's break down those big ideas you mentioned. Interconnectedness, transformation, where do we even start? Let's stick with the web metaphor, right? Everything's a giant web, and when you tug on one thread, the whole thing shakes. Our actions, they ripple outwards, affecting everything around us. Okay, I can see that, but doesn't that kind of make you feel, I don't know, powerless? Like my actions are just a tiny blip in this huge web. It's not about feeling powerless, it's about realizing that even small actions have power. Every choice contributes to the overall picture. Like it's taking responsibility for our part in the whole thing. So less about me, 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 and more about understanding how we all fit together. Exactly. Now, on to transformation. Look at nature, right? Everything is always changing, evolving. Requalism says that's fundamental, a core principle of how the universe works. So no clinging to how things are, but being open to change and seeing it as a positive thing. Yeah. It's about embracing that change, seeing it as growth, as evolution. We're in constant flux, both us and the world around us. The only constant is change, right? But this takes it a step further. Like, change isn't just a fact. It's essential for growth and balance. Exactly. And that brings us back to the law of arrangeability which kind of explains how all this change leads to balance, not chaos. Okay, let's circle back to that law again. You compared it to a seesaw before. How's that work in, say, my life, the choices I make? Picture your life like that seesaw, yeah. Every decision, everything you do, it's like adding weight to one side or the other. The universe, according to Ritualism, is going to work to even it out, even if it takes time. Hmm, interesting. So... It's not that everything will always be perfectly balanced, but there's this force always pulling things back to equilibrium. Exactly. It's a dynamic process, yeah. constantly in motion, always readjusting. Okay, I'm starting to see how these pieces fit together, but hold on. What about individuality? If we're all just threads in this giant web, what makes me different from you? Ah, uh, that's where the IPV theory comes in. It's how our individual interests, perceptions, and values shape who we are, how we see things, how we interact with the world. Okay. Break down IPV for me, it sounds a little jargony. Think of it like this. Interests are your cashins, what drives you. Perceptions are how you see the world, your unique view. And values are what you believe in, what matters most to you. So like my love for music, interest, my belief in being kind, value, and my view that the world needs more creativity, perception, all that makes up me. Exactly. Your IPV, it's like a fingerprint, totally unique. Yeah. And it's always evolving as you experience new things, interact with the world. It's what makes you you within the larger context of the web. 
Okay, starting to click now, but I bet there's way more to unpack here. Where does Requilism fit in with all the other big philosophy ideas out there? Does it borrow from any of the classics? That's what we'll get into next. Requilism definitely has some ties to both Western and Eastern thought, but it also carves out its own path. It's a mix of familiar stuff and totally new perspectives that can really challenge your assumptions. All right, listeners, get ready. Things are about to get philosophical. Okay, so we've got the Requilism basics, everything's connected, always changing, and that whole balancing act. But how does this compare to other philosophies we might know? Is it like existentialism's cousin or something completely different? It definitely has some interesting conversations with those big ideas. Like there's overlap with realism, you know, acknowledging that objective reality exists out there. But it also pulls from idealism by recognizing the power of like individual perception. So not just the world as an IS, but how each of us sees it, interprets it. Right. And mm -hmm. that's where this idea of the equivalence error comes in. Requalism pushes back against this air, which is basically us trying to simplify complex stuff into two opposite sides, like that black and white thinking. Ah, so instead of for or against, there's a whole spectrum of perspectives to consider. Exactly. And that links back to the whole continuous transformation thing. Truth isn't static. It's constantly evolving as we experience new things, get different perspectives. Makes sense. If everything's changing, our understanding of truth probably has to change too. But does that mean there's no objective truth at all in requalism? It's not that objective truth doesn't exist. More like our access to it is always kind of limited by our individual points of view. Yeah. And those points of view, well, those are shaped by our unique IPV, remember? Mm -hmm. Our interests, perceptions, and values. Okay, so it's like, I don't know, we're all looking at a giant elephant from different sides. Each person sees a different part, but nobody's got the whole picture. Love that analogy. Yeah. And that's why requalism is all about being open-minded, willing to see things from multiple angles. It's getting past that either trap and embracing the messiness of reality. This is making me rethink how I approach like discussions and debates. Maybe there's more common ground to be found if we start trying to force everything into neat little categories. Exactly. And this actually leads us to some interesting connections with Eastern philosophies. Requalism shares some core ideas with, say, Taoism, especially the focus on balance and the interconnectedness of everything. Oh yeah, Taoism. Yin and yang, finding that harmony between seemingly opposite forces, sounds a lot like the law of arrangeability. Totally. Both philosophies recognize this natural tendency towards balance and equilibrium in the universe. But requalism takes it a step further, suggesting that this balance isn't static. It's dynamic, a constant process of adjusting and transforming. So it's not about finding perfect balance and then just staying there. It's more about riding those waves of change and adapting to stay balanced as things shift around us. You got it. And this highlights another key difference between requalism and some other philosophies. It doesn't put this single, all-powerful entity in charge of everything. It's more about the collective actions and interactions of, like, all things driving the process of change and evolution. So more of a decentralized, bottom-up approach to change and balance, not some top-down control from, like, a higher being. Exactly. And within this interconnected system, requalism says free will is still important. Our choices matter. They contribute to that ongoing transformation of the universe. Okay, wait a minute. How does free will even work if everything's interconnected and always trying to balance itself out? Doesn't that kind of imply things are already determined? That's a great question, and it's something requilism directly tackles. It sees free will as existing within that web of interconnectedness, not fighting against it. Our choices have real consequences, but those consequences ripple outwards, you know, affecting and being affected by tons of other factors. So it's not absolute freedom versus everything's predetermined. It's more like this dance between the two. Our choices matter, but they're always part of a bigger interconnected system. Nailed it. It's that delicate balance between individual agency and the whole web of connections. This is starting to sound like one of those mind-bending paradoxes philosophers love to argue about. Does requalism have anything to say about those classic brain twisters? Actually, yeah. Requalism offers some unique takes on those classic paradoxes, especially the paradox of omnipotence and the paradox of free will. Ah, uh, yeah, the ones that make your head spin. Like, can an all-powerful being make a rock so heavy that can't lift it? And if everything's already decided, how can we have free will? Exactly. But requalism comes at these paradoxes from a slightly different angle. For example, that whole omnipotent paradox usually assumes there's this single, all-powerful being calling the shots. But requalism, with its focus on interconnectedness, challenges that assumption. 
It sees power as more distributed, you know, spread throughout the web of existence, constantly in flux and redistributing itself through all those interactions and relationships. So less about one big boss with all the power and more about the dynamic interplay of all these forces in the universe. Precisely. And this also helps us understand how Rookwellism sees free will. It's not about absolute freedom in a vacuum. It's about the choices we make within the context of this interconnected web, knowing that our actions have those ripple effects and will inevitably influence and be influenced by other forces. Okay, starting to wrap my head around this, but let's bring it down to earth a bit. How does all this high-level philosophy stuff actually apply to our everyday lives? That's the million-dollar question, and that's exactly what we'll dig into next. Requalism isn't just some abstract idea. It actually offers practical insights into stuff like figuring out our identity, making decisions, understanding our relationship with the environment, and even shaping our ethical principles. All right, listeners, time to get practical. We're about to build a bridge from the philosophical clouds down to the ground we walk on. Okay, so we've been weaving our way through this web of requalism, got a handle on the core ideas, even wrestled with some of those head-scratching paradoxes. But now for the real-world stuff. How can we actually use these ideas in our lives? Let's start with something we all deal with, identity. Remember IPV, interests, perceptions, values. Requalism says that really understanding your own unique IPV, that's a key to living a more authentic, more fulfilling life. It's like figuring out your personal recipe, right? What makes you you? But how does that actually work in practice? It all starts with taking a good look inward, you know, self-reflection. What are you truly passionate about? What are your core values, the things you hold on to no matter what? How do you see the world differently from other people? Requalism encourages us to really dig deep and grapple with these questions. I can see how that'd be valuable. Yeah. It's easy to just coast through life, not really thinking about what makes us tick, but wouldn't focusing too much on me, myself, and I just make us, well, more self-centered. That's where the interconnectedness piece comes back in. Requalism reminds us that our individual journeys are always intertwined with others, with the world around us. So understanding your IPV isn't about becoming egotistical. It's about figuring out your role in that bigger web of existence. So it's about finding your place in the grand scheme of things, but also knowing you're part of something way bigger than just yourself. You got it. And this interconnectedness, it can actually make us better decision makers. Requalism encourages us to think about the ripple effects of our choices, not just how they affect us personally. It's like that every action has a reaction thing. But Requalism takes it further, right? Mm -hmm. It's not just cause and effect. It's understanding the web of connections that shape those outcomes. Right. And it encourages us to make decisions where our personal values are balanced with a consideration for the well-being of others. Plus, you got to stay adaptable because remember, the law of arrangeability suggests that change is going to happen. Got to be ready to adjust course. Yeah, that makes sense. In a world that's constantly shifting, stubbornly sticking to plans, probably isn't going to work out too well. <laughs> but this sounds like a lot to keep in mind. How do we even begin to apply this kind of thinking to our everyday choices? Start with awareness. Before you make a decision, just hit pause for a second. What's motivating me here? How might this choice affect other people? What are the potential ripple effects down the line? And am I open to changing my approach if things shift? So it's being more mindful, more deliberate, not just reacting on impulse. Exactly. And this awareness naturally flows into our relationship with the environment. Requalism's emphasis on interconnectedness really highlights our responsibility to the planet. After all, we're not separate from nature, we're a part of it. Makes you think of that iconic Earthrise photo, you know, the one taken from space. It really puts things in perspective, seeing our planet as this fragile, interconnected ecosystem. Absolutely. Requalism encourages us to view the environment not as something out there, but as an extension of ourselves. So caring for the environment, it becomes a form of self-care in a way. I like that. It's not just about saving the planet. It's about realizing our well-being is tied to the health of the planet. Like they're inseparable. Exactly. And this interconnectedness, it also shapes our ethical principles. When we see how our actions impact others, it fosters empathy and compassion. Like, we're all in this together, so treating each other with kindness and respect just makes sense. Right. Requalism says to align your actions with your values and consider how your choices affect others, not just what's in it for you. It's a more holistic approach to ethics. This has been such an eye-opening deep dive. Requalism really does give us this unique framework for understanding ourselves and the world around us. But I gotta ask, does this belief system have any critics? Of course. Every philosophy has its critics. 
Some argue that because it emphasizes the relativity of truth, it could lead to moral relativism. Like if everyone's perspective is valid, how do we decide what's right and wrong? Yeah, that's a good point. It could almost seem like anything goes if there's no objective standard for morality. That's where the requalism emphasis on values and interconnectedness comes in. It's not saying there is no right or wrong, but that our understanding of those concepts evolves as we grow and learn. And when we recognize how interconnected we are, we're more likely to think about how our actions impact others, which naturally guides us towards more ethical choices. So it's not about throwing out objective truth completely, but acknowledging that our understanding of it is always changing, and we should be open to new perspectives and interpretations. Exactly. Another criticism is that focusing on individual identity, that whole IPV thing, could lead to too much individualism where people neglect the importance of collective responsibility. Like if everyone's so busy figuring out their own IPV, who's taking care of the greater good? But remember, requalism emphasizes that individual growth and self-awareness happen within that context of interconnectedness. Understanding your unique IPV, it's about finding your place and your role in that bigger web, not isolating yourself from it. So it's not individualism versus collectivism. It's about how those two seemingly opposite forces can actually work together, complement each other. You got it. Individual growth and collective responsibility, they're not mutually exclusive. In fact, they can actually make each other stronger. Wow. This has been a truly mind-expanding deep dive into repolism. It's a philosophy that encourages us to embrace change, to seek balance, to recognize how interconnected we are, and to live a life that honors both our individual journeys and our responsibility to each other. It's about seeing the world as this complex, dynamic, interconnected web and finding our place in that web while trying to make a positive impact. So as we wrap up, I want to leave our listeners with one final thought to chew on. How might understanding your own IPV, your interests, perceptions, and values, not only lead to a more authentic life for you, but also contribute to a more interconnected world for everyone? It's a question worth pondering. It really is. Requalism invites us to embark on this lifelong journey of self-discovery and connection, realizing that we're both unique individuals and essential parts of a larger, ever-evolving whole. And that's what makes requalism so fascinating. It's a philosophy that speaks to both our personal aspirations and our shared humanity. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. Until next time, keep exploring, keep asking questions, and keep seeking those connections that tie us all together.